Hi, Martha. Thank you so much for being with us. It's an honor to have you with us and, and it's great to know that you're joining us on this. Uh, Martha, as you know, I'm a spine surgeon. I deal with patients uh, who have issues with back pain and we're trying to focus on what are the various issues uh, in terms of disabilities they have with their sexual functioning. So, so tell us more about what you do, Martha. Okay, sure. So I'm a clinical sexologist and relationship counsellor. I've been in practice for eight years. I'm based in Singapore. I have uh, four degrees, including a doctorate in human sexuality and a master's in counselling. So I essentially just work with uh, all kinds of uh, concerns, uh, questions that uh, people have around their sexuality and relationship. Uh, just to ask you more, Martha, to, to get down to what we're talking about, what, what are your thoughts? Why do you think sex is important? Well, there's so many ways to answer this. Uh, a lot of people just see sex for the purpose of reproduction. However, for any of us who have had sex, whether by ourselves or with a partner, uh, we know that sex makes us feel good. And uh, in the, on a the biological perspective, there's all these uh, feel-good hormones, there's the oxytocin that's being released, there's the dopamine, it calms down our nervous system. And a lot of people think about sex in the context of in a partnered relationship, but that's not true. Um, sure, the role that uh, sex plays uh, with a partner has to do with uh, intimacy, pleasure, connection, then by yourself, there's expression, there's self-realization. And um, in a nutshell, we have sex because it feels good. And um, I see our sexuality, not just sex, our identity of ourselves as a sexual person, as our basic human right. For someone who loves sex, it's easy for me to say that. But what about those people who have had it and uh, feel that they don't have it anymore. The grief on top of what they have physically is amplified because they have had it. For people who have a, a disability from birth, for instance, or mental, maybe they may not be able to process it, but they feel this um, urges and they want to um, be able to express themselves. So. I, I'm not sure that I answered that well, but I, I, I um, you know, like the World Health Organization, uh, UN, you know, they, they see uh, sex as uh, our basic human right. And I think a lot of people don't see it from that perspective. Martha, I think you've put it beautifully. I don't think you could have answered that question any better. You've said it very well. And on the same lines as you've, you've, you've briefly mentioned, tell us something more about what revolves around disability because back pain by itself is a disability anyways but a little more broader in on your viewpoint about disability and and sex uh, altogether what, what are your thoughts on that yes yeah, so when we think of disability we naturally uh, think of physical disability uh, and sometimes we forget about mental disability which i mentioned just now then there's also permanent disability and temporary disability and um um, when we talk about uh, disability, sometimes the link with illness uh, is there and uh, with cancer, with terminal cancers, so uh, it's also there. So when it comes to the spine um, or any kind of uh, physical pain, uh, when you feel pain, you don't really um, uh, want to have sex, but actually with some creativity, it's possible to have sex in many different ways not in the traditional way that we see sex uh, to be, which is uh, penis and vagina. That's just one way of having sex. And um, it's unfortunate that there is very little um, modeling uh, in pop popular media and um, not really enough um, education and conversations around it. So if uh, disability does happen to someone, uh, that is acquired later on in, in their lives uh, because we haven't had those conversations uh, to have to deal with the uh, physical disability and on top of that, the sexuality difficulties that can occur is like a double whammy. Somebody who's already feeling down and despondent and depressed and feeling inferior now suddenly has this other thing that they uh, find themselves 
um, not ready to face. Uh, sometimes um, surgeries uh, can be for the purpose of life saving. So sometimes when, uh, for instance, if nurses are severed um, and they're not, they're not told about all these things, um, it can really be very, very traumatic for, for them. Uh, even certain well-meaning words that doctors and nurses may say had uh, really start to play in their minds uh, much, much uh, later on, so much so that they uh, shut down and maybe they don't seek help sooner. And all these years of uh, maybe possible uh, closing up and suffering uh, can lead to a lot of anger and grief when they uh, finally um, work with somebody specific with their sexuality. Well, Martha, you've touched very well on, on a very important aspect of, of the attitudes that people have towards disability. And, and all of that you've said is really important because patients don't realize, realize all of these factors. Uh, in terms of what they can do about these attitudes, do you have any thoughts uh, on, on that? Uh, well, you know, it's it's very, very personal sex and our relationship with our sexuality. The lack of uh, sex education is there and then the lack of conversations is there. And um, as uh, practitioners, clinicians, trying to help our patients and clients, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, we don't really have the education around it ourselves. So if we, are, we ourselves are not comfortable with sex, if we don't see sex as important, then uh, this would not occur to us to be sensitive around it. And as somebody who really loves sex, which I uh, mentioned just now, <laughs> uh, as somebody who really loves sex, um, it's hard for me to um, not want to help people when it comes to sex. But for uh, a doctor or nurse or clinician, um, therapist even, if they not uh, see sex as important, then it would not occur to them to bring it up. And it's kind of our personal stuff being projected onto somebody else. And it's very unfair because uh, obviously our experience with our sexuality is very different from theirs. And as much as I'm very positive about sex, I, I don't uh, impose my sexual attitudes and beliefs onto other people. My goal is to support them where they're at and to help them get to where they would like to express themselves. And it's, it's really important that doctors and nurses, clinicians, um, therapists um, first work on ourselves so that we have a, a positive sex attitude. Even if we are not expressing our sexuality, at least be positive in our thinking. And whatever that we feel that we don't know, that we are scared, we are afraid, that we go find out so that we can provide the best quality of uh, care and uh, service to our patients and our clients because they deserve the best. And that's part of uh, them feeling happy and fulfilled in their lives. So it's, it's really important um, if we want to be the best that we can be, that sex is something that we look at uh, supporting our clients and patients. And Martha, you've given me so much insight. And on that note, I think that's why it's very important for us surgeons to, for, to, to let our patients know that there are people like you who are doing such good work. Uh, Martha, I really thank you so much for being with us. It's been great talking to you and I really hope patients take a lot of input from what you've said and, and come and try and gain more knowledge from you. Thank you so much for being with us today, Martha. Thank you. Thank you very much.